Okay. First of all, let me please tell you this. Um, it's a huge pleasure and honor to be with you here in this reputed college. I therefore, I therefore want to thank very warmly the organizers and many of the people I have not seen, I mean, but met and uh, the uh, administration, students and everyone, and especially Armel Crozier, that I, since she has said herself, I have met her in Ivory Coast and since then we have remained in touch and even we have not seen that much physically, I, I guess, I think we have been in touch uh, by email or other contacts and it it's was absolutely uh, uh, not normal, let's say, but it was uh, predictable that I, I somehow sometimes come to Middlebury. So thank again, Armel. Uh, I want to thank also Nadia Harting and her students. I met recently Nadia, but she has been. It sounds we have known each other, one another, for a long time. So it's my the first time I came in this uh, green mountain state, you say? And I really appreciate it because uh, the environment, it sounds very wealthy, though I found it maybe difficult to live it <laughs> in, in winter, I guess, some, many, many of them. So Middlebury is obviously a, a famous institution and a very beautiful location. Uh, born to a poor, far away, deprived country and former French colony. Uh, but also coming from France where nowadays college and university library are in such a bad situation. Uh, being in Middlebury looks like, I will guess, like the l'avant-goût du paradis for someone who is like me is uh, definitely a rat library. <laughs> so it's very kind. At this stage you should have noticed that English is a foreign language for me. English is only my third language after Somali, which is my native tongue, and French, my creative language. So I pray you to excuse my weird and exotic accent. <laughs> Living now in Berlin, Germany, as a writer in residence, as uh, uh, Armel said, I have learned at least one sentence in German, which is, makes my friends every and uh, every time funny. I uh, love them, uh, laughing them. Uh, it goes this way. I guess you know more German than me. Ich spreche ein guten and accent frei Deutsch. So the, the English is not my, 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 is not my first language and is not perfect and thoughtless. Uh, I'm, I guess it's far better than my, my German, so I will continue. Now coming to the topic, inventioning or forging, I will say, uh, a new Africa, a new image of Africa. I will indulge or address this question only as a, maybe I'm excused not to address it in a maybe uh, political or geopolitical or more serious way, but uh, I'm, I'm what I am, I'm only a, a, a man of words or images, so I will try to tackle it with it uh, from the point of view of a writer, a fiction writer. Uh, a writer of fiction is someone who creates words, images, feelings, and who hopes with his words to try to create maps, even maps, and utopias. And I guess uh, aux Etats Unis d'Afrique, as we later come on, it's a kind of utopia. A writer, if he's seriously committed to his or her work, is able to create such things, I mean such utopias. At least that's what I have tempted to do when writing my latest book, Aux Etats Unis d'Afrique, and some of the students here have, 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 have indulged in it. But for, uh, uh, before coming to the topic of what is the new image of Africa that I'm trying to forge, maybe I will go back to where I am writing from. You know, in, in, uh, I, I came from a culture of France where uh, literature is not addressed from a political point of view, and so it's considered as a, some, uh, etch, uh, some kind of not connected to reality, I mean, something which is descending from, from uh, a God-given kind of... Uh, uh, gift. So uh, they, uh, we always suspect when a writer talk about where I'm writing from, what I'm wanting to do, and what it, it's, it sounds as if it's, it was uh, loaded with, uh, with politics. But I will here come again to, uh, as a first part of my, my, my talk here, uh, to, to briefly map you where I'm writing from and, and where is, uh, what, I, what I wanted to do. 
as a writer of the nomadic descent or from the uh, deprived uh, periphery, I have a series of ironic and some say may say negative definition of my own country, my country of birth. Uh, as uh, Armel have said, I, I this uh, she, she quoted La République Miniature, but I have forged and some others uh, uh, images, which is ironic. I, I call that Le Territoire de Poche, the pocket territory, uh, La Le Pays Inabouti. And even worse, which is, I will not translate, le trou, le trou du cul du monde. <laughs> this definition says more uh, about, uh, about, about me and my relation, which is sometimes complicated and uh, conflicting than, than about the truth of the place. Those, definition, those definitions are reflecting some conflicting, as I say, or politically fertile debate. It has nonetheless nothing to do with some kind of uh, but my, how I call that self-hatred, so as some may sometimes understood. Let me precise that this kind of paradigm is so common in literature history, and it's just an example that comes to mind. You, you have writers from Aust Austria uh, has had this kind of conflict with their country. Uh, not to, in that, I mean, not to be long. I will just quote uh, the case of Thomas Bernard or, or, or El Alfred Jelinek or more recently Peter Hanke. So this is a common thing. So I'm not original again. I will say a few words about what I call uh, uh, a writer of deprived country, or a nomadic writer. It's true here that today there is an inflation of the use of the terms nomad, nomad, nomadic, in postmodern or global writing, in tourism, and in the medias. I often use them, these words, nomadic, mainly in the narrow sense. Not I ignore the powerfulness of number of writers of nomadic heritage. Their works will and can be easily confronted with the latest trends of modernistic writing in all the diversity of color, form, temperament, and style. It's, I'm thinking here of writers like Tayyip Salih from Sudan, Nuruddin Farah. Uh, Muhammad Deep, for instance, Jamal Mahjoub, and the like. A young writer of a deprived and periphery country, deprived and periphery when it comes to fiction creation. And literature in the, in the modern sense of the concept. But I just want to say that uh, I say that I come from a young country when it comes to literature or fiction writing in modern Europhone ways, but uh, as a country itself, I'm, I'm maybe older than the U.S. because, as you know, uh, uh, the cradle of humanity is, is traces back to my <laughs> region, uh, what they call the Rift of Valley. So I'm this way your grandfather. <laughs> I also ha belong to, as I say, I also belong to the nomad tradition. It means that, as I've said sometimes, that if my f grandfather was a true nomad, my father, though living in the capital city of Djibouti and some other places, was a semi-nomad. I say was because he died some years ago. In his mind, I mean, in, it, it has to do something which is, uh, I mean, practical. You know, if, if he, because he, he was a, a Muslim, and when he was uh, fasting, and when he was breaking the fast, he doesn't even need to have a clock like me on it. Just to know uh, the, the shade and the length of the shadow and these this things with practical. And he, th that's why I call him, he was semi-nomad in his mind. And I am from the truly first generation of definitely urbanized or uh, 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 city, city dwellers. And most of my writing in, in involving, I mean, it's, it's tending to uh, recreate what I have kind of lost. And uh, of course, uh, it's, it's more has to, I mean, it's not in the real sense, it's just kind of project for me. So what's more, I, I, as I say, I belong to the first generation of perfect city dwellers. What's more, not only my words, but my hopes and dreams should betray that the fact that I belong to the small elite of the country. In the past, that small elite was introduced to the larger world through Arabic, the book of the language, or so it's called. In this part of the world, there were a few members of Ahlul Kitab, as we said, as they said, people of the book, 
And like most, like most members of my generation as a child, I was aware of the gulf existing, and I insist that between my, myself and my parents, before my, ten, my tenth year, a gulf as wide as the distance separating the oral from the written tradition and the universes of references to, to the later and the former, I mean, to the oral world and to the written world. The task of the writer from this deprived area in this is very special one. More than task, it sometimes has, it's, some, it's sometimes a kind of fate. The quasi absence of female writing in nomadic areas is only the tip of the iceberg and a huge source of culpability for me at least. Not to mention that the fact that the artists are still threatened by persecution, imprisonment, and even death in places like Somalia, the Sudan, Algeria, Kurdistan, Djibouti, and so on and so forth. Daily conditions are discouraging, and most tri creators find it difficult. In a land, <laughs> sorry. They find difficulties uh, because they, we don't have this kind of, oh, gosh. in a land of uh, oral or nomadic poets, I will try to quote someone that I, I, I like very much, is the Somali writer uh, in English, uh, Nuruddin Farah. His name is coming across this day as a possible uh, winner of the, <laughs> of the Nobel Prize. So we'll see it in writing Thursday. <laughs> but there are, of course, a couple of other challenges. Uh, uh, so it's, it's, it's a very difficult, the daily, the daily conditions are discouraging. Most writers find it a strain being a novelist in a land of oral and nomadic poets. And I quote Farah, there is no tradition in Somalia, he says, I will ask you, I will add also in Niger, in Djibouti and other places, of the writer who locks himself or herself in a room and writes and thinks. We have the poet who takes a walk in the bush and comes back after a half day with inspiration for the next poem. He follows on in trying also, I will try to explain why this gulf between my parents and me, and I also quote Nuruddin Farah again from a piece this time called Childhood of My Schizophrenia. He says this, I grew up in Kalafo, a town in the Ogaden under Ethiopian rule. Beside us, the Somalis, there were an Arab community engaged in business and a large garrison of Amharic-speaking soldiers. Their soldiers were said to have been recruited from all the ethnic grouping of the Ethiopian Empire. The schools, whether run by the Somali community or by the American missions, were situated near the seat of authority, which is what was called at that time, or the other side of the Shabela River, where government hills were situated. So this, as you see, the, sitting, the setting is very interesting here. A nomadic child like Nuruddin Farah has to strive if he wants to get education. His family moved from southern Somalia to the Ogaden just af after his birth. In that periphery of the empire, Ethiopian empire, the way to education and the culture is full of all manners of obstacles, including a river full of crocodiles. That was in the, let's say, 50s, but Things are not that different. Then comes another obstacle, wh which is the Bible of foreign languages and references. And the young Nuruddin Farah, also my case, is more than confused. On the school side of the river, we learn, we learn about, we learn of the Nile, the Thames, the Ganges, the Euphrates, the Red Sea. But our river was not mentioned, nor were our towns, nor were the names of our sisters. Then our parents informed us that their ancestors had come from the other place, which means Arabia, which was indeed, which indeed has received and mentioned the Holy Scripture. Why, for instance, were our, in, our, in, our instruction in other people's tongues and languages, our parents had not grabbed off? We spoke Somali at home, we spoke Somali at home, sorry, but we read, we read and wrote in other languages, Arabic, Amharic, Arabic which is the language of the Quran, Amharic, that of the colonial master, the better to know he thinks, and English, the language which might one day offer us entry into the, a wider world. We moved, and this is important, I call it, I, I underline, I mean, we moved from one language universe to another with the disquiet 
of a tenant on a temporary lease. This piece of Nuruddin Farah illustrated perfectly, I think, what I call as well the nomadic situation, or in French, l'impossible quiétude. Nuruddin has concluded that colonial, I added nomadic situation, or childhood part, sorry, is childhood, colonial childhood is discontinuous. The child grows up neither as the replica of his parents nor of the colonial ruler. It with, it, it with this in mind that I began writing in the hope of enabling the Somali child at least to characterize his otherness and to point at himself as the unnamed, the divided order, older, a psychophrenic child living in the age of colonial contradiction, out of good. Therefore, the task of the writer in this periphery is to remap again and again the landscape and the landscape of the people, what he call his people, but it's not only his people. What I wanted to do, again, says Nuruddin Farah, was to combine what I received from others with the gift that, have, that I was given by the Somalis and to reunite them in me, in my work, in my creativity. So uh, talking about Nuruddin Farah, I'm, I'm, it's a way of talking about myself also in a way. So the task is demanding and the amount of energy and the degree of ambition should be of, con of consequences. Not only the writer is here mediating between his own culture and the wider international context, but he is also attempted, he's also attempted to build the library, what I call la bibliothèque, au sens de Borges use it, use this term. But one must be careful because there are many traps and it goes on with maybe the discussion we will have in a more, uh, at least a lively way uh, 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 from les Etats-Unis d'Afrique. But one must be careful that because there are so many traps on his on one way, authenticity, for instance, it's based. It's one of them. Authenticity. It's based, says Marie Condé, on the very normative ideology that for so long consigned us to the peripheries world, to the world's periphery. So this is what I wanted to say about this uh, kind of meditation I had. I mean, what I call the, the writer of a, a deprived area who has, uh, on one hand, the task of saying that I want to remap the culture of my people. And then we'll see that the, 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 the combination is more difficult because who is my people? I don't know. I mean, I'm questioning. I know some, what are my people, but I'm not the outspoken of my people because I have difficulties with my people also. So uh, the problem is more complex. And if I come to Who's uh, Etats Unis d'Africa? Maybe to say, I will just. say in a more un informal way uh, what I wanted to do, and maybe I will try to have you engage in a discussion that I, because this is how I function most of the time. I, I'm not a good reader of, of essays written already. So I will continue on. Uh, I came, I was born in some 41 years now, and I have been living the last 20 years in France, which means that I have been living the first part of my life in, in, um, in Djibouti, which is the latest French colony to be decolonized. So I'm a perfect byproduct of what I call l'école républicaine, or when I'm, because I'm try, try to be ironical, what I call les barbichettes de la troisième république. I don't know if I may try to translate the she-goats of the third republic, which was this uh, school. So uh, we have this discussion in France about the legacy of uh, uh, colony, uh, colonialism. But it has to do also with, well, it's, it's just not a theoretical uh, uh, subject for me because I'm, I'm the byproduct of this uh, Ecole de la Troisième République. Uh, uh, and uh, because I'm from a poor uh, milieu and I have been having access to uh, uh, education because it was free. Well, it was colonial, maybe, but so it was free, and it was more equal than it is today in the so-called Republic of Djibouti. So that's why they call the things are complicated. So I came in France in in 1985 with a baccalaureate, and at that time Sarkozy was not there. <laughs> at that time, any Djiboutian student 
with a baccalaureate, was entitled to study in France for, uh, somewhere. So I ended up in, in, in Caen. And as you may know, as you should know, even I say, that the word of Caen is undecipherable. Uh, you know, we cannot, we say Caen, Caen. And at that time, uh, I remember someone, um, some friend was thinking that I was going to Cannes. Uh, and for two weeks, I, 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 <laughs> I was uh, hilariously glad because I was thinking that I was uh, in going to Cannes and I added up in Co. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I told that some journalists from um, uh, some Libération, Mathieu Lambert, which is who is uh, the son of the founder of Les Editions de Minuit, and in Libération they are stuck to they have to make puns. So this is their job, you know, whatever they, they, they have to make puns on, on words. And I told Mathieu this story, and he said, and there were a full page story of for coverage of, of my, of my uh, first novel. But the title was, Il voulait aller à Caen. Il voulait aller à Caen, il s'est retrouvé à Caen. He wanted, he wanted to go to Caen, he <laughs> ended up in Caen. So this is uh, the funny way of, 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 of summarizing <laughs> the whole story I have been telling him. Half a day, maybe. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So I, I, I uh, came in Caen uh, uh, in 1985. I, by the age of at the age of 20, almost 20, uh, you might say 20 is not the right time for a baccalaureate because the baccalaureate you have to be uh, from 16 to 18, and you say, yeah, this guy was not good enough. <laughs> but no, that was. Normally now, I mean, I'm normally good, but uh, 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 because of the legacy of the colony, we, we were starting school very lately. So I, I have been schooled in French at the age of seven, I think. So uh, bac the baccalaureate uh, at 20, it was <laughs> normal. So uh, I have been, so I, I came to, to Caen, and for I have, uh, I had, I mean, kind of contract I, I was supposed to, to do some five years of studies and then go back to Djibouti. And as what maybe uh, Sarkozy ignores is that uh, no one wants to get a refugee or no one to flee his country. It's just conditions that sometimes force people to go elsewhere, but no one. So at that time, I have a kind of even to use a, a huge metaphor, which is geopolitical. I have a feuille de route. So I was supposed to go to somewhere, to France, uh, be there five years and then come back to and then build the nation because that was the agenda. Uh, Djibouti was at the time I went to baccalaureate. I went to France. I was eight years old, so we were all uh, kind of programmed to come back and to build the nation. And then uh, something happens. What happened is that uh, by the time I was studying, I just uh, firstly uh, uh, at that time I was going to. But the question was what I was studying, and I have this maybe uh, intuition. I said I will not do a maîtrise in French because I speak French since uh, the age of seven, at least. And in maîtrise, a uh, master on Sartre or Beaumarchais, or whatever, will not end it something. You know, I have, don't have to say maybe, yeah, but because you are you are not French uh, of, of of culture. But I say maybe I will have to learn English. That's why I'm here talking to you in my broken <laughs> English. <coughs> No, I, I, I studied for five years, and by the time I was studying, I wanted also to be a journalist. I am not a journalist, <laughs> sorry. I sometimes collaborate with, uh, in, in contribution, like, like uh, uh, such as uh, Le Monde Diplomatique or Lettre Internationale in Berlin, but I'm not a journalist by profession. So I wanted to be a journalist, but I trying to figure out what it will be a journalist in, in, a, in a dictatorship like Djibouti, because I realized by the time I was in France that it was a dictatorship. So I studied and I having feelings, and it was a very harsh, difficult period for me because on, on one side I was programmé and was I have the feuille de route and was you have to do something and then go back to your country and build the country and even your poor country is paying for you a grant. You know, it's a, a huge sense of culpability. And the other way I was feeling that the place that have sounded me or my country was not that good enough. I mean, when it comes to, in terms of, when it, when it comes to, to civil uh, human rights and uh, speech, freedom of speech and so on and so forth. So I was saying, I was kind of uh, divided and say, you have your mother who loves, but your mother is not uh, that kind, and then what do you have to do? So the only way I have 
uh, find the only solution I have found uh, at that time was to pursue my studies. And I say often that uh, in uh, the face of what I call uh, la nomenclature préfectorale, <laughs> the, the way they, 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 the administration uh, come to terms with things. I know they say this, this one is a refugee, this one is an immigrant, this one is a... It's the, uh, the only case I could uh, apply for, it's étudiant attardé. <laughs> so I was for a long time étudiant attardé, and I was going back to Djibouti every summer. And my, my poor family was saying, but are you coming back? Are you always studying? They was even afraid I will become blind because they have this kind of, they say, he's still studying. How old is he? 25? He's still studying. Oh. Very soon he will be blind, <laughs> and then my mom will be, he will be blind because reading every because they don't say it's studying the same reading, which is the, the Arab word uh, we, we have in Somali. He's always reading, and uh, but what happened is was uh, 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 in 1994 I published a book, which is my short story volume, The Land Without Shadows, Le Pays Sans Ombre, published recently in the in the U.S. in Virginia University Press, The Land Without Shadows. And then quickly, uh, this is the vertigo of the francophone on the deprived countries, as I was saying before. Uh, pretty soon, my book was on the syllabuses. Not that I was so a genius, but it was, uh, uh, there was very few uh, pedagogical uh, uh, input. So they were using my first uh, short story book as, as a, as a, as a or baccalaureate even. And then, uh, I went to the, in the summer in Djibouti, and then, uh, and so on. And then I, uh, the next year, I published another short story book, Cahier Nomad, the nomadic, uh, the nomadic notebook. And again, I went to Djibouti, and then, then I really felt how uh, a dire situation it was for me, because the authorities wanted to trap me, because they wanted to say, yo, you are, because I have had publicity or, or, or papers on uh, articles in, from Le Monde to Jeune Afrique, and they say, who is this guy? And so even the president of Djibouti summoned me and called me and said, you, you are a good guy, you are a kind of young ambassador of the country, but what do you want to do of you? And I say, I am an étudiant attardé. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love Baudelaire and so on, and say, yeah, it's fine, but uh, what do you want to do of your life from your life and so on? So the trick was, are you working for the company or not? <laughs> And even if I'm not brave enough, I have uh, understood that uh, working for the company, at least his company, which is the government, was not, uh, for me, a, a kind of fate. And I say, so, so the only way I say that I'm, I'm finishing a PhD and so on and so forth. So we play in the trick, and every now and then when I'm going back to Djibouti, you say, are you wanting what you want? And say, they're culpabilizing you, you know. We have paid for you, you are a poor man, and so on and so on, and you are leaving your country this way, and so on. And in, in, on the other side, if if I just enroll as a, because I wanted to teach, I love teaching, this is the only thing I can do, I, I love to do. Uh, I've pretty soon I will be in a bad situation because they will be my, ma my uh, master. So, uh, so I guess that I will, so I just play two ends every time and say I will come next year and so on. Uh, till the, my latest book of uh, one of, also, I mean the, after the to two short stories there was a novel and then they understood that I was more uh, even more subversive that they thought first. And then this time I became, uh, stupidly, I was trying to aggravate my case, you know, after book after book, but I was not <laughs> that aware. And at the end, it, it comes out that I'm, 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 I can even, I, can, I just can go back for some time or for, for holidays or seeing my mom, but I cannot live any longer in Djibouti. So it's kind of definitely self imposed. Uh, uh, from self-imposed exile, it became real exile now. But uh, but I uh, I have resolved this uh, trauma now, and uh, I'm, I'm very doing very well. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so what I'm saying this because it's uh, I was trying to remap my 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 route and saying that uh, having lived uh, lived the t first 20 years in Djibouti, I then became a Frenchman now, living in Normandy. <coughs> Uh, in a very tiny place, uh, region, you, you must know, because if I make the publicity of my region is the region of, in very small, I mean, area we have Camembert, which is a village ne next door to my <laughs> lycée, 
And not far you have Pont l'Evêque, which is another good fromage, n'est-ce pas? And you have the country of Calvados also. At least my department is called Calvados. So uh, I became a brand new French, but French of different flavor, different color, different uh, temperament also. And uh, I have been experimenting a new life. That's why, I mean, to make it short, uh, that's why I, I, I moved to, uh, from the first three books, uh, first trilogy, which was mapping a, a land which is not unknown and which is very little known and very deprived to the map of literature. That was my task from the first part. part. But then it happens that the country itself became a dictatorship and most of the people I was, it, which was my people, I mean, I was writing about, but they also moved and some of them live in, in places improbable like Minnesota. You have Minnesota, the twin city of Minnesota have became Djibouti and Somali. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> It's the irony, what I call the post-colonial irony. So, uh, uh, and living in France, uh, and as an African or a French African or new French or whatever you wanted, it, I have been so many uh, deeply involved in the discussion was Africa and so on and so forth. So that's why I make this book, which is a kind of utopia, aux Etats-Unis d'Afrique, and because I wanted to not only uh, question the, the, the so-called prejudices or preconception or cliches. But in this book, I was, uh, I wanted to just to demonstrate, not demonstrate, but to just to, because I'm not, I'm, 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 it's a, a book which is, I mean, my writing is heavy on, on language and so on, so I, it's, a, it's a, a risky way of simplifying and saying I wanted this or I wanted that. But let's say that uh, one of the, one of the obsession was that uh, I wanted to show that Africans are not deprived by nature. This is only, I wanted, they are deprived, they, they have many uh, uh, pitfalls and many difficulties, but all of these are not made by nature. This is all in fact I wanted. They are not naturally this way, and I am fighting from the, what I call the nature. So it's a kind of uh, philosophy book, and one of the sort of inspiration have been Swift, uh, the Gulliver's Travels, and, 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 and philosophical books like uh, the novels of uh, Voltaire. And I wanted to show that, yeah, if we talk about the real world, we can talk, you know? And I wanted to, as we say in the academy, I could deconstruct the discourse, the discourse of experts, because experts super, very often use a preconcept, preconcept and which is uh, sometimes working. I'm not uh, saying that I'm, uh, I am from uh, enlightened sources, <laughs> but it's often, uh, what is, it's often, uh, a way of uh, a prefabriqué discourse. I mean, and it's try to explain everything happening in Africa from the point of view of ethnicity. And I say, yeah, if you want to indulge in ethnicity uh, expertise, I will be one of them, and I, I will analyze Switzerland, for instance, <laughs> like like a, 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 an ethnical uh, poudrière, as I call it in my book. And so, so the books begin with a, a character who is coming from Zurich. Because the, the, the real world, what we call the West, is deprived, and les États-Unis d'Afrique are the, the prosperous continent. And this refugee, ex future refugee from Zurich, is going to, to, to Africa. And you see, let's say the Mediterranean can be recrossed the other way. So <laughs> we can remap the map. So that was uh, the part of uh, which is appealing to some farce or some funny uh, uh, aspects. But the. the the book is also uh, uh, going a, a bit, at least I wa wanted to be uh, understood that way, but a bit farther because uh, the main character who supposedly remapping the world, I, I, she is also, she's a sculpture, uh, young sculptor, sculptor, you can say in French both. Uh, and she herself is in a, prob a problematic uh, persona when it comes to her race or her origin. So it's not just saying that Africa this time is good, it's prosperous, it's hegemonic, and the West is bad and the West is dying. We will see, of, uh, within the, while reading the book, we will see that things are more complicated also. So that's why I, 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 I call it Aux uh, Etats-Unis d'Afrique. And within this book, there is also 
sometimes in a farce, but also sometimes a serious uh, subtext, which is uh, uh, referring to what we call Pan-Africanism, which is an idea that have been uh, 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 enlightened in the 60s, and some of the, who be, some became dictators afterwards, but some of the African leaders were, were always talking about Pan-Africanism. So I say I will do my small Pan-Africanism scheme in my, in my, in, with my own, with my uh, own tools, which are only words. So uh, in this co in this book, it's, if I make a second of publicity, it's the only book that you find Africa is united from Cape Town to Tangier and from Dakar to to to, to Djibouti, and the, the only book that you find some prostitutes who are Vaticanesque uh, or Monegasque. Uh, Exercing or working in Douala or in uh, <laughs> Abidjan. <laughs> so, I guess we may, uh, I may stop my talk and, and respond uh, on talk on mean exchange and, and maybe challenge your questions or, or apply, <laughs> uh, 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 g give you more in depth. For example. Writers who had taken on the new uh, aspects of the new culture but remain, remained African were writing out of, of both sides, but about Africans who were of neither. In other words, it seems to me that the, one of the problems with two cultures in contact is you may acquire both, or you may have neither. Mm -hmm. You know, the beasts of no nation, as they were calling them. Mm -hmm. I think I hear you saying that we're beyond that now. Perhaps the independence is falling behind us. And, and are we, in fact, beyond that? And why? Yeah, thank you. Uh, of course, I will just uh, uh, give you my feelings and my, my impressions because uh, not only as a writer, but also as a colleague of writers, and, and we, we, I often go to uh, many uh, festivals or writing, symposium or gathering, either in, in, in Europe or in sometimes in America now, but also in Africa. We have, some, we have settled something interesting in Bamako these days and have been also involved, for instance, uh, with the groups of writers and filmmakers how to make some kind of testimony after the genocide of Rwanda. So I have been involved in, in some of those uh, uh, in events. So I think, yeah, you, uh, I think we you be approaching the point. And uh, it was a time, I, if someone is not uh, uh, agree, he may correct or challenge. Uh, it was a time uh, when uh, the first generations of African writers uh, for example, like people like Katebi Asin in Algeria or, 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 or else, or some, or even Ngugi is still, I, I think, in this kind of uh, thinking. Uh, but the first generation were, 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 were the first also spokesman of their people, because uh, just think about Sangor, he just uh, 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 became a president, not, as he said, not he wanted, because he was pushed, because at that time, uh, there were very few of them in Senegal who could uh, advocate the the flag of the nation and, and, and the build, what I call the, the, build, the nation building. This was also the case in many places or, or, or where many writers of the first generation, either in the Maghrib or in the Southern Sahara Africa, have been also writing, uh, writers, but also uh, politicians, because we, we needed them. You know? And that's why politics and, and writing were so closed, and s the people who were not uh, who not have the luck or the luxury to to to, to do that? We're also in in, in a, what I call in a position of culpability. You know, uh, for instance, I have been struck by the great culpability of of Kateb Yassin because he was he was unable to write in French in in, in Arabic. He was from Berber, so he was divided. You know, so I. That's why uh, you were writing. In, in you were so involved, and I think that the new generation, what I call elsewhere the fourth generation, which is my case, we have been some kind of going through in a way of that, you know, and we're not so much the representatives, or we are not so linked to our nations, because 
in Nigeria, if you take Nigeria, uh, they have, I mean, the young drivers of Nigeria have any chance uh, mathematically to be so important man before, I mean, today than before, you know? And, and we, we, we are not so linked with the, with the leading or leadership of the country, or at least in I, I, I think that young riders can get some lose a distance from their country. And so that's why they maybe are more a, a la fois, at the same time, insiders, outsiders. And there is also the new uh, global age and this, this uh, um, exodus or migration, uh, and they, some of them uh, became now nation of a citizen of other nations. So the link between the nation and the rider became loose. This is what I mean. And also the culpability, is, is, uh, you know, at the time, it, but it's still, when I go to Africa in, in, in my country or elsewhere, that's in my country now, but in elsewhere, we have this discussion of the, of the students on who, who are still uh, thinking in, in a utilitarized way and saying, you are a writer, so you are a master of language, so you have to have a, a political voice or opposition. And I said uh, even to yesterday that it's not because I'm mastering some poetry or some language that I will be a good or efficient politician, you know? So that's why I think the, the, the loose, the connection between nation and writing is it's more elastic now. I don't know if I could respond correctly. But so there is no, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that there is less capability because, and I, I'm glad because the forefathers four have, have done their job in a way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> maybe I will begin with the, uh, the criticism or the reception in Djibouti itself uh, to, to make maybe my, my uh, discourse simpler. In Djibouti, it's very simple. I have the first two books uh, which are on the cur curriculum, on the syllabuses, because it, w as I said, it, it was, uh, so new, and there was, so still, at least there are no writers from Djibouti who, who, are, who are known outside. I, I'm the only so-called Djiboutian writers. Anyway, th there were so few uh, texts and fo so few production of fiction and essays or such, so, so I have been this way uh, uh, used uh, pedagogically. And this is a vertical because from in six months or nine months I have been uh, <laughs> out of, uh, of print. I mean, I've been printed, I was also classical. And when I'm sometimes, it happens to me that uh, uh, when I have some egotic, uh, let's say, uh, wink, I, I say to someone, um, I was kidding, of course, I say, Moudiano l'Ecclesio, you can sell a thousand of thousand of copies, but I have been classical before you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let's say, th those, the first two books are, are, are on the syllabus because it was so new and the Djiboutian government and the Djiboutian people are saying, no, there are someone from us who can read and who is published in Paris and who we can classify his name in Le Monde, for instance. But then it became very uh, uh, complicated because they have seen that I was not, not only working for the company, as I said before, with that my irony, but I was also challenging them in a way, but I was I was not, of course, I'm, I'm not stupid. I, I was weaker than them. So I was using, as Joyce will say, la ruse, uh, l'exil ou la ruse. So I was using l'exil et la ruse. So then they understood that maybe my books were not that good. And now, <laughs> <laughs> and, and they have used uh, many ways of strategies of, of, of uh, from s in simple uh, denigrement, you know. And, and, and now one of the insults they give me, sent to me, it's that I'm a French writer, which is okay. <laughs> Le petit garçon, because every now and then I, I went to Djibouti with the, within the uh, uh, invited or host, host to the Institut Fran Le Centre Culturel Français, Arthur Rimbaud, because we have this network. This is very good with the French system. We had a network of Institut Français in, 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 in the world. And uh, Fran in, uh, Le Centre Culturel Français in Djibouti is called Arthur Rimbaud. So I, was in s I have been invited uh, many times by uh, Le Centre Culturel Arthur Rimbaud. And every now and then, and very, I mean, very often I met uh, 
the Minister of Foreign Affairs or the Minister of Culture or the Minister of, 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 of Education. Uh, they are of my age because they are of, of my ages. They are, some are friends of school, school long-time friends. And they say, we have to invite you this time, you know, the Minister of Education have seen say, at least three times. Uh, we invite you this time as a Djiboutian. The government will be honored to invite you because you will not come again for the French. And of course, I have never seen so far an invitation coming from my so-called country. <laughs> so so this, the reception is simple. The first plan, uh, we'd say they were uh, appealing to me because of nationalism thing, and then they said, no, this guy is not us. But that's the point of view of the authorities. The young people, they are more uh, welcoming, of course, they are, they, they are more warm. They, they, they reproach, our, one of the criticisms is that, that I'm indulging heavily in language and it's, they have to buy uh, not only the books but also the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in France, I will say that I pretty have a good reception. Uh, they were always praying, uh, prizing my language abilities, but I, it's not, uh, for me, it's not that, uh, it, I'm not saying that I'm important, but it's simple. I mean, the fact that they're noticing that I have uh, skills ability, language ability is also problematic because in language, yeah, I was born, not born to this language, but I'm mastering this language, so why are yeah, they insisting on my abilities, poetical abilities? It is meaning that I'm not that French, or you know, that, that kind of, and, and I say, I say I'm not proud uh, of using this uh, uh, language. I'm not also uh, complex, as we say, or uh, 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 downing myself. Th this is for me like simply like a pianoforte. It's my school, I mean, it's my, uh, my, my tool, so I have to use it uh, the best I can. So, but I, I will say that I have pretty, pretty <laughs> good reception. No, uh, you know, you guys in the U.S. are the avant-garde of francophony, <laughs> so keep on, keep on doing. Uh, but it's, it's complicated because it's not, I think, always, uh, because it's not always a kind of uh, patro, how would you say, patronizing. It's also that the, the history of French literature, ha it's so heavy, so, you know, it's... Uh, by the time you come to Gide, uh, you have to wait for a long time. So by the time you have to Sangor, it's also... So to put it shortly, uh, the, the Francophone writers are not that uh, uh, teach, taught in, 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 in the lycée. It's, they have been in a temptation to put uh, Sangor, Césaire, or, or program uh, occasionally. And even Césaire have been uh, uh, kept out of, uh, of the program uh, because some right-wing... Uh, 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 um, uh, BA, um, MA, um, let's see, member of parliament have, have, have complaining on saying the discourse sur le colonialisme was so harsh. So this is, but I think as a Frenchman also, we, it's the kind of battle we have to do because French uh, is at least just beginning to recognize its multicultural uh, uh, ground situation and they have a lot of job to do and we are contributing to this, I think. But to put it shortly, uh, at the, u at the university, uh, it's brand new, I mean, the last 10 years. But uh, again, if I'm not wrong, there are only two or three chairs uh, francophonie, one in Paris, uh, Sorbonne 3, and one in Strasbourg 2. Must be one in maybe in, 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 uh, in, uh, in uh, Aix-en-Provence now. All in all, it, 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 it very few of, of chairs de francophonie, uh, and so it's there. Uh, but uh, francophonie is a complicated subject. But at the same time, uh, Fra the French, what I call, I'm not have talking because I have talked about my, my uh, first work, which was devoted to the but I've, I've done two books which are related to what I call the African provinces of France, <laughs> in a way which is not serious, of course. But French it is also becoming some kind of uh, African country, so, so it's, uh, it will come, but the, the Let's say the, the head, head offices are not aware of that. Though we have met recently uh, 
the president of Sangor, because there have been a cluster of 40 writers, Francophone writers, uh, selected from all the countries we say Francophone, and there was one of them in, or one of two of them by country, per country, and, and there were 40, and Chirac was welcoming us in Belize. <laughs> so you know we can do that, and at the same time we can ignore for a long time in the Priscilla, because the France is, as you know, very strange. But I'm going to say I'm, 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 I'm also <coughs> to blame because I'm, I'm also participating. So I'm a titular, professor titular of the DC. So. But yes. No. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and, and the case of Farah is also the periphery of the periphery of the periphery because he was born in, 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 uh, in Ogaden, which is uh, also uh, the western part, as you know, of Ethiopia, but with it's populated or inhabited by a majority of Somali. And so Somalis, like Eritreans some years before, consider it as a colony. So it, it's, it's re-complexify uh, the question of colonia colonialism, you know? We have thought that colonialism was also white and coming from the overseas, but we, in this case, and mm, and the nomadic areas, uh, I will also take other examples, are re questioning this because, in my culture, Ethiopia, because, uh, because I'm Somali by 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 culture, even if I'm Djiboutian by nationality and and by history now, uh, we consider Ethiopia as a, as a black colonialist and colonialism. So it's it <laughs> uh, that's why I was. Because I have taken those uh, quotations in, because in, in essays are written by Nuruddin Farah. But yes, it, it's, it's, and I, to answer you quickly, maybe I, it's, the task is more harder when you are the periphery of periphery because you have to run faster to, 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 <laughs> to, to get into the track, you know, to, to join the others. Uh, and, and the, the maelstrom of Nuruddin languages, it, he, he was, Born, as I said, uh, in Somali family in an Ethiopian uh, province. province. Uh, he was educated partly in some American missions, and he was mastering uh, very quickly other languages like Amharic, Arabic, uh, and some Italian afterwards, and English. And English was the most convenient for him. And he's so, so we have this kind of, uh, of uh, it's also a miracle by for itself for, for him and also a picture of the deprived areas. So it, the, I will s take a, another example like uh, Tuareg, the Tuareg poet uh, Hawad, who's writing in, in Tifinagh, but it's also to his, uh, who's also a friend of mine, like Nuruddin, but who is translated with or by his wife uh, and his, uh, his for us, of, uh, for, for people who are interested in literature, uh, Hawad is the only poet uh, f of the Tuareg descent writing in, in, in French, or at least where, uh, for, he, for which uh, the, the books in are in available in French. Because we have other cases like Ibrahim al who is uh, a Tuareg of uh, Libyan uh, nationality, but who's writing in French and in English, in part or in Arabic, and he's translated. But uh, Hawad also has to, to, to run faster. So let's say that it's. It's just explaining why I was maybe challenging the, the United States of America by proposing, or the Western, by proposing this utopia. But uh, in, 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 in when you are from the deprived area, you have to come first to the, to the uh, center of your uh, world and then to move to the center of the world. So you have to, to run faster even than the, the, and I can't see that, for example, that Nuruddin is, is more deprived than Chino Achebe. But it comes only because 
There are so many Nigerians, critics, and journalists, and so on, and Nuruddin have been the only uh, uh, writer of Somali descent in, in the international cycles. So, but maybe we are fast writers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't have any uh, more clever interior <laughs> also. <coughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, I, I also like to, to shift from one topic or war interest to another. And right now, it's the last six months, six weeks, I have been coming to Berlin, uh, where I live as a, as a writer in residence. And by the what they call DAAD, which is Dutch Academic uh, Exchanges. Or and, and, this, and within this DAID, the city of Berlin has uh, uh, set up years ago now, decades ago, a uh, 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 grantship for 20 or 20 something writers or artists from every corner of the world. And uh, there are four sections, lecture, uh, film, music, composition. And it's a very prestigious Perhaps we in the grant because people like uh, Imre Kalten, or Susan Sontag, or Vargas Llosa. <laughs> you know, it's just <laughs> make me to, 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 to shut up just. <laughs> but uh, those people have got the price and uh, the grant. And, and the only condition are to have been published in, uh, in German and proposed by a panel of critics or men of letters and women of letters of, of German language, I think. So th th just th uh, you just have to, uh, to make some appearances in, in Berlin, but you, you are free to work. And it's, uh, it's uh, good because uh, uh, Berlin is a vibrant and dynamic uh, cosmopolitan. I'm not interested by, by elsewhere in Germany, but I'm interested by Berlin, which is, uh, for many reasons, a, a, a good place to be these days. So uh, I have a project of, of writing uh, a novel, because I have been teaching the last 10 years Non-stop, at least. And this is the first time I'm kind of off uh, my duties as a teacher. So I'm trying to do, because before I, w I used to make a novel every three years, but now I say maybe I have the, since I have not doing something else, I have the luck to maybe to make a novel in half or half a year or two years. And I have the project to revisit. I don't know why, but the, the, tr the, the, ilf, uh, the misfortunes of People, what I call the, the collapse of Little Europa, but also the, uh, the misfortune of, of writers or philosophers like uh, Walter Benjamin and, and Joseph Roth has appealed to me. I don't know why. So I will use maybe uh, some, some part of uh, Benjamin's lives because he has been in, ba in Paris also, because, and he was translated, as you know, indulging in French, as you know, and he was living in Paris. And Philip Roth also. And maybe try to make something. Uh, I don't know, there will be at least be shadows in my, in my novel. But maybe to re-question the question of exile and migration today from that point of view. I don't know how I will, I, because I'm not written the work, but I, I don't know how I will mingle everything. But uh, again, maybe to reactualize the, the, the present day uh, uh, misfortunes of Africans coming to Europe uh, via Mediterranean and saying, uh, uh, Benjamin have been crossing the Mediterranean, the other, or attempted to cross the other way around. It's maybe, I don't know what, but uh, this figure and this fortune, misfortune of Roth. And, and I've been rereading the, the, the journalistic pieces of uh, Joseph Roth, and it's very, very, as you know, very uh, important and very uh, poetically, and very illuminating and captivating, and so on and so forth. So I, maybe I will try to invent something between Lego with you then. <laughs> And those uh, refugees, the German refugees, Jewish, German Jewish refugees in Paris. Yeah, yeah. So I have to, all those people to seduce, you know that. <laughs> Uh, I, I was born to, uh, in a shanty town, as you say, in, in, in Djibouti, 
And very often, but I'm challenging, you know, the traditional uh, way of uh, presenting, or even some African presenting themselves, you know, this moonlighting tales and uh, Sule Baobab uh, tales uh, from my grand grandmother and so on and so forth. I'm not half uh, indulging in that uh, <coughs> tradition. I was born in a, in a shanty town in, in Djibouti, the, in town, I mean, city, which is the biggest city in Djibouti. So, so I'm, I'm a man of Bidonville than a man of uh, moonlighting. <laughs> Uh, Amadou Koma like his uh, background, you know. So this is what I tried when my, f even my first, first, first short story, which was called in French, in, in La Galerie de Fou, which has been translated three times, but uh, which is in the, in the, in the, in the volume, The Galerie of the Insane, was a, a temptation to write. Uh, as that, at, the, at the time I became so-called a writer because I was in the solitude of, uh, uh, a roommate uh, in Chambre de Tu in Normandy, so I was trying to, who I was, why I was, what was the f this feuille de route, what will become of me, what was my task, what I will do for my country, and so on. So I'm trying to come to terms with this, those metaphysical questions, and, and I just wrote some pieces which are uh, totally private or recollection of my um, childhood and so on. So, and then I, or someone or some readers realized that I was trying to map out some word which was coming lively and so on and so forth. So I don't know what is modernity, but I, 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 what I know is that I have never had uh, neither the opportunity nor even the, the courage to, to, to go back to the nomadic life because uh, all romanticism aside, uh, 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 living like a, a nomad, it's very, very difficult in, in, in corner like uh, Horn of Africa because uh, just routine also, huh? you have it's, it's a tough life. So, so I'm trying maybe to say that I will find what, what, what was missing or what I lose from my father or my grandfather. But this is also my, inc how do you say, inclinations of my, my thinking. But it, it has more to do with fantasies and phantasmagories as, 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 as in a different way uh, Walter Benjamin will say, but than, than real life. So, so this is my, my departure part is it's how to make alive my Mombidonville, my, my shanty town. So it's absolutely hard to do something with, with the modernization, but I, do, I couldn't die. I mean, I couldn't make, because you are asking me technical question of modernization and westernization. I don't know, but I have tried to, 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 to make alive my, 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 my neighborhood at that time. And so it has to do certainly with, uh, with all those uh, East Tango, but I wouldn't say is this and that, you know. <laughs> Difficult. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you.